welcome back to the first half on TSN 690. That track has to get you in a good mood. If anybody is in Montreal right now, we're living summer again, man. It yeah. is summer vibes, summer right? Summer vibes. You cannot not be happy hearing this. No, you definitely can't. You definitely can't. Joanne, Joanne Charbonneau, welcome to the first half on TSN 690. Thank you for joining us. I wanted to mention, I didn't mention it at the top when I introduced you, but I really like this line. Joanne's commitment to promoting sports and unifying communities is evident through her numerous, uh, numerous professional and volunteer engagements. That is such a good line. That's one of the lines to describe you. Um, but there are I more will lines. I will thank Zach, though, for all of the lines. It's all Zach? Like, Zach is putting the great line. He's like, you're talking and I'm writing. So keep talking. Keep talking. And so it's for, always, for those yeah. that don't know, right, yeah. Zach is? Zach is a member of the Montreal Alliance team. Yeah. He's our communication director. Mr. Comunicazione. Exactly. Okay. So, Joanny, welcome to the first half. Thank you. Um, we're very, very happy to have you here. Um, I, we, we did the usual and just talked about the bio. But now you're here. So it's yep. no longer my words, it's your words. We'd actually, I'd love to get to know a little bit about your background and sort of yep. how you got to running shot at the Montreal Alliance. I mean, you're the president. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're directing the alliance with, you know, with yeah. the top. It's to, actually still sinking in, I think. Is it? That, yeah, every time people are saying the title now, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's me. It's me. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, you're super down or, you know, you're... you're you're approachable and a lot of times you know within those those levels of of sports franchises it's very it starts you know there's a separation between sort of the office the athletes yeah. and everybody else. yeah no it's and it's honestly something that well i wouldn't like but uh, it wouldn't be my personality i think uh, probably all my family and cousin would be like come on what happened to you and they would probably put me back down really fast ground you quickly oh yeah ground me quickly but it's honestly what i like the most about sport it's connecting with the athletes and the people so if i don't get that interaction i feel like i'm missing the point of it because everything you put on is for the athletes it's for the people it's for everyone who comes and see it's for the people who work with the, with you so if you you disconnect, I think you're losing part of what uh, what you're doing, and and you're gonna miss the feeling of everyone connecting around you. So, I hopefully I'll stick with that. But every time I see people at the alliance, they come and talk to me, and I'm like, you're in for a long run because I talk a lot. So Amazing. I hope you have five ten minutes. <laughs> As, and the ball starts, the ball yeah. just starts rolling. Right? Yeah, yeah, and I start cheering in and out of the conversation. So it, it has it has happened. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Oh, because this, you're talking about at the game. Oh, yeah. At the game, people come Amazing. and talk to me and I keep like, yeah, I'm answering and then cheering and then coming back to the conversation. So it's... Uh, you it's don't lose track? You don't lose track? Not so far. Hopefully. Okay. Hopefully. But yeah, sometimes I'm missing few points though. But it's... Uh, That's I, very I, impressive. I'm, tr I'm trying to keep up. Trying yeah, to keep yeah. up. Yeah. Very impressive. Okay, yeah. very cool. So give us a little bit of your background. Yeah. Uh, and then, how, right, so because this wasn't the initial course based on, no. on your profile and sort of other stuff that we looked at in the background. But so you mm. tell the public how you went from where you were uh, into into this yeah. very, very recent position. Yeah, very recent position. Um, honestly, it started all with a passion for sports. Uh, always been passionate about sports. I played soccer, football, but soccer for the people around here. But since I was four, I played for like 20 years and uh, always enjoy sport. My family, they, they like sport, so we talked about it a lot. My two grandfather, big hockey fan, so obviously I'm a hockey fan as well. And so it's always like driven me and I was always passionate about it following basketball, soccer, tennis, baseball, everything. And it just kept into going, what can I do in sport? And I always loved law before, so I was, and still it's, still in between my job, but I wanted to be a lawyer. So I was like, what can I do to bring those two together? And I saw somebody doing an interview saying, oh, well, I'm a sports lawyer. I'm like, oh, it's actually a job. I can be a sports lawyer. Amazing. That would be great. I can actually do like follow sport and be in law as well. So I kind of all did, did my school career 
thinking I would be a sports lawyer and then learning about the I was la learning about the field and learning that for example in the NHL Bill Daly is actually a lawyer and he was working in the area of sports so he was more of a contractual um, lawyer and then I heard about Julien Brisbois who was doing a bit of the same thing went on to be the assistant GM and now GM with the Tampa Bay Lightning so I kind of like figured well if they can do it I can do it and got into law school at the University of Ottawa Um, and wanted to learn English, so I went to CJEP here in English, then moved to Ottawa because I figured I need to speak English and French. Yeah. Um, and so in, in Ottawa, I had a class in sports law, and yeah, I was like, that's done. That's for sure what I'm going to do. You and were hooked. I was hooked. And so I found a sports law master in Marquette in Milwaukee and decided to leave for a year to go wow. do sports law master in, in Marquette, Milwaukee, where the best thing ever for a year, you just have sports class all the time and it's about NCA, it's about professional sport, amateur sport, it's about anti-doping, it's about everything and everything about sport. And, and, and how it relates to law. And how it's yeah. related to law. And then you can see also the feel as on the side of an agent, but you can see it also as a side of a lawyer because sometimes it's a bit different. And so I liked it uh, a lot. And in and out, I was working with my sports law teacher from the University of Ottawa at a consultancy firm here in Montreal, LBB Strategy. And I worked with them doing strategic planning and high performance plan in more of federated and Olympic related sports. Right. And so when I came back, I started going with, uh, with him again. And I got an opportunity with another sports lawyer um, who was like, do you want to do event? I'm like, why not? I am still young and, uh, and I'm still like thinking what we can do. And like how you can branch into the into exactly. that sort of ecosystem. Exactly, because we don't have the same ecosystem here in Montreal. In, in the U.S. it's easy, well not easy, but you have way more field of working in sports law because one city can have multiple professional teams and they can have multiple universities. In Montreal we are a bit uh, more of a closer area, so I wanted to see what I can branch out and and see how it goes. So, And I the university teams in the U.S. are pretty much run the same way as the professional it's a sports teams. So they're all... <laughs> it, so yeah. you really... When you're saying there's that many more touch points into yeah. that field, you're not kidding. Yeah, no, not kidding. Even, like, for me, my first experience was at Marquette, and I realized, like, I always knew it was a big basketball team because yeah. we hear about Dwayne Wade, and he brought the team there. But when you assist to the event that it's in the same stadium as the Milwaukee Bucks, and there's actually way more people at the NCAA basketball game, then and you're like, okay, it's a full-on circle. It's actually a business. The coach is actually making more than all my teachers combined. Crazy, right? <laughs> But it's, it's crazy, and And so you see them, it's actually a real business. And But on the other hand, it's helping pay for all the other sports at the university. So sometimes we see it as like big program, but the big program contribute to having other sports program and helping out. So as long as they kind of feed each other, that's great. But it's obviously a big business. And so the opportunities there are Are, are big and but I wanted to come back to Montreal it's where I came from so um, and there's a lot of uh, and again you were mentioning about the yeah. Olympics and that that Olympic segment there's a lot of that going on here there's a lot of yeah. international sport organizations hubbed yeah. here right yeah and we had we had actually one of the house of the Canadian Olympic Committee that is here actually downtown Montreal and we have a lot of uh, provincial federation that have their house in Montreal and we host every year multiple Canadian championship and international championship and we uh, we discussed it a bit earlier when we, we were speaking but there's actually a UCI event uh, in cycling this weekend there's a there's skateboarding event so the event world in Montreal is more common because yeah. we I think we're a community of event we like to go we to, like to we, we like, like the happening we, we like, like the we happen like happening yeah, yeah, yeah we like totally. the happening and enjoy ourselves and Amazing. so it was kind of a uh, a way to get into it and I started with actually triathlon event and I was supposed to be an operation and it lasted two weeks and they're like take whatever you can and I just started to learn and and see what I could do and then we brought mold other events and I was more in charge of developing what we could the other potential sports so we add on three extra basketball and then we went with beach volleyball and break dancing so we had multiple events and so it all was, under one banner head yeah all, all under uh, one banner that was uh, yeah. podium production and right. they, they were doing multiple events in Montreal for the last eight years okay. and so it was more of 
getting in touch with different events and you learn about relationship with international federation, with the city, with uh, the different level of government. And how to navigate that, right? Uh, yeah, yes. and how to navigate that because there are so many layers and we don't think about it when we're seeing it as a spectator. And now when I go to other events, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> the work right. they had to do to like pull this off. Yeah. But uh, it, it's giving you always a new eyes to see it. and, and New I, perspective. Uh, yeah, new, new perspective and so much respect for the people and dedication that they do and pull it off with not the same level of contribution or resources as other maybe professional organization but yeah. it's uh it, and it's probably where i i the connection with me because they're driven by passion and that's how i plan all my career with so far is i need to be passionate about what i'm doing and when i'm not passionate about it i'm missing something so are you passionate about the sport or are you passionate about what's around the sport so because you did mention quite a few different things from yeah. growing up playing soccer um is one thing the family was definitely a big hockey family yeah. but then we're now talking about triathlons we're talking about biking we're talking about basketball we're talking yeah. you know there's a few different things yeah. here so is it m less the sport and more the the sort of the entire surrounding or is the sport as important for you on the passion side which then eventually anyways leads into everything else yeah yeah i need to be passionate about a sport i think uh it's just i'm so curious and i like to learn about all the other sports and i am a big fan of the athletes and how they come about so i feel like i respect all of what they're doing for their sport and their contribution obviously i have my passion for specific sport like basketball or like hockey because i cannot deny it and like soccer so i feel like it's the sport but then that led up to open my eyes to so many other things yeah but i always go back to the first three one that were like all the one that i growing was up. More, yeah that i was growing up and more passionate about or that i experienced way more um and i like team sport so for i i while i see all the impact of individual sport and they need a village to perform. I really much enjoy watching team sport, just the way it clicked, the way people click, the way they think, the way it can bring so many different people together under the same goal. Um, yeah, that's always been something that I like. We're talking with Joanne Charbonneau from the Montreal Alliance here on the first half of TSN 690. That's an amazing sort of response. And then that leads me to one of my questions for you was the community. I wanted to ask you, um, how has the Alliance faithful, um, you know, connected with you, but also what do you see um, with them and how important this fan base is for your team and, and the CBL? I yeah. mean, the, the Canadian Basketball League, I think, again, I'm, I'm much more into football. I mean, I, the rest of the sports, I'm, I, I, you know, yeah. I dip yeah. in and out. Um, but they're doing a good job. But there's a lot of work to be done. Like yeah. you, you won't, no one can deny that. So your fans are your key, right? That they're, they're the core of everything. And all year round. So yeah. even when the season's done, yeah. right, th that link can't be broken. And then, hey, well, I'll mm. see you in a couple of months. It's just not going to work. No, 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 exactly. And, and that's definitely something that I like about the Alliance and that, that is actually not a challenge but it's something that you always have to keep in mind because you got to stay connected with your people even though sometimes the players they're playing abroad and uh, their contracts and to be renewed for the next season so we know the one that are connecting with everyone here but sometimes we don't know the restrictions that's going to happen under their new contract but um Does, are the contracts training uh, are the contracts changing that often every season i mean you really you must it can't change to the point where you're you really got to start from scratch. You never start from scratch. It's just the it, because we're playing under FIBA rules, yeah. contract cannot overlap over each other. So when they go play to another city, we have to uh, they uh, they have to be on that contract, and right. they cannot technically sign with us until that contract is done. So depending when their playoff is going on, are they going further down or not? For example, Ahmed Hill right now is playing in Israel. Well, depending on when he's going to finish playing, can we bring him back? Does it fit? Does it make sense? Obviously, he's the favorite of the crowd, and we all love Hamid. So we, we are, we're doing yeah. everything we can, usually, to bring the athletes that actually are the core of the team. But it's always a challenge. And that are of, connecting with the fan base. Yeah, that are connecting with the fan base. We, we always ask the fan, who, like, their players and everything. And 
the good that it's a the good and the bad thing. The, all the players are connecting well with the fans, yeah. which is which is great. But sometimes we gotta make adjustments. Obviously, we want to win, so we always have like tricky things. Do you, do they get injuries? Are they wanting to retire or not? So it, there's always some adjustment, but obviously the core is usually the the goal is to bring them back most of the like year on year, so yeah. that way they learn, they click, and they they get more time playing together. But we're always uh, under these international rules where we gotta be careful when we are signing everyone. But um, like we were saying, they connect so well with the crowd that we cannot no. just deny that. And that's something that I love when I was approached with the Alliance. I, obviously, I was going to games before because I love the sport, but it was all the way they were so approachable and they were staying after games and even before the games they're playing around with the kids and they are involved with the community they do events during the off season sometimes even though their contract is not renewed they love the team so they right. come back and they want to do events with us and so that was really important because i feel that um, for a sport like basketball you need to be involved with the community and you need to be to be connecting with the, the people that will support you and then that way they will talk about it and then more people will come and it's just going to be, it's a big tight family in the end yeah. that comes together. Is there not enough uh, dollars and cents behind uh, the team and the league to be able to hold on to these players so they don't have to run off to sort of supplement with another contract? Again, the, the league itself is an interesting sort of time frame. Yeah. Right, it's short. It's very short and sweet. Yeah. Like and so. It was built up a lot as a development league. Correct. So basically, more as a complementary to another league. So it's uh, and now it's growing because the demand is there. Right. We used to be twenty games. Now we're gonna go to twenty four games. So it's uh, it's all it's still developing. It's still a young league. It's very. Uh, it's, it's not that that old actually. We're and the alliance. We're still a kid if we think about it in terms of uh, of how long we've been existing. Yeah. So it's a. Uh, they have always been more of a development and and that way they're kind of prof professional development for them and keep growing. Um, and in terms of salary, their compensation is actually interesting if we think about it in terms of four months. But obviously it's not a 12 month contract and they need right. to, to well, gain it's a, it's a job. Yeah, it's a job. It's, it's a, a job. job, right? And, and, and obviously the ideal would be a bit like uh, soccer that you have like a team that your owner owns a team in Europe and yep. he owns a team here and then they can actually do a full round and they play all year long. But it's not there yet. I think at some point it's going to go Is that down. something that they're hoping they can, they can connect with ownership that will have teams playing in other markets so that players can be loaned out, contracts can then extend for 12 months versus the, the four, uh, and then all of a sudden you have a player, like you said, that can be interchanged. It's still under the same brand, same, you know, that sort of thing, and then they can connect yeah. with any community member, really. Yeah, yeah. It, it's actually, I think it depends on the market. Sure. Some of them have been more uh, forward in, ter in ter that thinking. I think some of them do it through their coaches. Some coaches, they go and they will actually sign their players to their, the other market and then sign them back when they come back here. So they know them so perfectly they, well. Yeah, they know them Amazing. perfectly well. So, so far, it's been more of a team by team and uh, what's your philosophy about it? Um, I would say, like, I think in the in the future it might go to that area because that way you can kind of have more of a full circle moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's still developing. The, I, I don't think we have a formalized idea where that wanted to go. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's fun to be part of it and be able to develop it and push it to a certain direction. Amazing. So we're speaking with Joanie Charbonneau from... Montreal Alliance, El Presidente. We're going to take a little commercial break and we're going to come right back. We have a couple more questions, then we're going to drop you into 12 questions, which is my favorite part Sounds of good. this show. Thank you for listening to TSN 690 in the first half. We'll be right back after this. Don't sweat Lucas technique. What's up, <laughs> DJ? Little clip, a little bump. Come on, bro. That's amazing. Eric B. Rakim. I, do you know who those guys are? Because they are absolute hip-hop gods. Yes. I am Paul Debaye, and you're listening to the first half on TSN 690, brought to you by the wonderful crew over at Quinquerie Notre Dame in the Sud-West, serving the community for over 135 years. 135 years. No joke. Joanie uh, Charbonneau, El Presidente, in studio with us. 
talk in basketball, did play football as a youth, a youth. So because of that, I'm going to put you on, I got to ask you right off the bat, uh, do you support a Premier League team? I don't have a Premier League team okay. for like designated. I kind of okay. followed a few players through okay. the years. I used to be a big Cristiano Ronaldo fan, okay. obviously. So that would give you United? The, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's been more of like going. I've followed more the international tournament. I'm a big okay. fan of when the World Cup comes up Amazing. or the Euro. That would be like they are my favorite tournament. So who are you back? So when, okay, World Cup comes along, who are you backing? I have a thing for Brazil. I kind oh, of like Brazil okay. team. Okay. Yeah, there, there is like, no wrong yeah, answer. Yeah, I like first Brazil. Half. I like okay. Brazil. Yeah. That okay. So be... yeah, but if Team Canada, if team Canada in there, 2026, then no choice. I cannot. I I have to go for Team Canada. Can you do both or no? I can do both. They're not that close, so I'm fine doing both. It's, okay. it's not the same as in like hockey. I cannot do Toronto and Montreal. It's no, not gonna not. happen. But absolutely with, not. with soccer, I I can do both. They're far enough, and they're not like too close of a rivalry yet so no problem so then good. so we'll, we'll move away from the prem yeah. mls are you following that yes i Excellent. was uh and and i'm still i need to get with the names i know but i it was the it's impact okay. for me i grew yeah. up for the CF impact Montreal, and, yeah. and captain patrice was like it's it's my player <laughs> bernier? yeah bernier was captain my, bernier yeah the captain was my captain Good. So, such a nice guy, but such a good player as well. Yeah, a phenomenal footballer, yeah, but yeah. also probably one of the nicest humans you're ever going to yeah, meet. So soft-spoken, always time for the kids. Yeah, we love you, Betty! Yeah, and he's always there. That was, And it goes back to community. The first time I met him was through a community event. He came, I was a kid, I was playing uh, soccer, and they were, they were coming in, they were practicing with us. I was like, that's the connection you want to have with the Sick. players. That's amazing. That's yeah. a great story. Yeah. yeah amazing. Um, for the, did you actually, did you watch some of Copa America this year? Yes, a bit. Uh, this, this past summer? Yeah, yeah, yeah a bit. Did a you bit. enjoy it? Yeah, no, I enjoyed it. it yeah. It's uh, definitely different than the European. I feel they're a bit more aggressive on the Copa America side, but it's, uh, yeah, it's yeah. a nice football, just a yeah. bit more aggressive. <laughs> right? That yeah. was spicy, man. Yeah. That was super good. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm not going to, this isn't about grilling you on football. So, um, I, I do want to ask you one last question about the Alliance and sort of, um, this has been fun and we could keep talking, but yeah. I'll also got to do the 12 questions with you. Um, what's, what's the plan coming up? Like, I, I'm not asking about who, who's being signed and all that, you know, that, that comes when that yeah. comes. But what, it, what, is, what, is the next, what does the next version of the Alliance look like within the community and community plans and outreach and... What are the plans during the winter? Like, do you have some stuff that you want to sort of tell the public about, you know, what you guys are up to to stay connected? Yeah, um, we, yeah, we have a, we, off, right? yeah, definitely. And it's something we've been looking at. We want to grow all our community events. We have one September 21st in Pointe aux Trembles where we go to a park and we're just going to change all uh, the basket and oops and everything. So Love that it. we do it, but we want to do more. One thing that we'd like to get more involved is doing clinics and camps with the players or with the coaching staff that are here and get involved with the community as well. So th that connection with the staff, the, the staff or the players, or everyone or our alumni, even our, like just our young alumni because mm. we're three years old, but still we want to get more involved with community events, going into school program and go bringing the players talk to different kids in schools um, and how we can get, the, get that involved. So the community aspect will be very important this year. Last year we had a good start and we still want to go ahead with that we had a future leaders program this year that we want to bring back next year it's basically uh, kids from different school that we bring in and they follow the coach they follow the president they follow the general manager to get them involved experience. in the sport business experience so that is something that uh, i really want because that's how sometimes the little sparks comes in and you you think oh yeah maybe i can do that and if they see that i can do it they can do it so uh it makes it that that's exactly yeah i mean you just you named it the future yeah. leaders program yeah like, i mean yeah. that is that's the future and exactly. that's the only way. It's not yeah. just going to be textbook. No, exactly. And sometimes when you see it, it's so different. And, and uh, the classroom is great, but then you want to have that in practice. And you're like, oh, well, maybe I thought of being general manager, but I like more the president job, or I prefer to be a coach, or I prefer to be in marketing. They're or gunning I for you, yeah, Joanne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel I'm going to have a few who's going to be like, I want your job now, and it's perfect. That's all you want. You want the yeah, kids that are inspired and that want your job. So yeah. if I can inspire one, then my job is done. So community is 
going to be a big yeah. key for 20, uh, well, 25, 2025. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 2024 already. And yeah, then if we can yeah, yeah. bring it back and, uh, and turn it back also in 2025, we have like two games more. So we want to bring more. Yeah. We want to do a lot more with our crowds when they come to the auditorium. Yeah. Um, it's always been something very important to us, the experience when you come it's to the auditorium. It's a great experience. It really is fun. It, yeah, it's really fun. And it's a family thing. It's a friend's event. So it's always that, that fun thing that we want to... Uh, we want to keep so this is something how we can expand that and uh, if they can come even earlier to the event to to that and stay and meet the players so it's really something we'll focus on that connection and keep our bond with our with our fan base actually i love it uh, up next we're doing 12 questions with alliance president joanny charbonneau right after this do you know where that's from no, actually. Sesame Street. Oh, yeah. Okay, again. Not when I, I, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to do that every time, and it's becoming maybe redundant to some yeah. of the people that keep listening to the show, but it's every time. Every yeah. time I say it to the guests, they're like, no way. Yeah. <laughs> Almost nobody knows. You know what I mean? Because yeah. some people are like, where'd you get that? How'd you make that? I'm yeah. like, oh, no, no. It's if a classic. You knew, it's a classic. It's a classic. Nice. All like right, it. we're doing 12 questions with Joanne Charbonneau on the first half. Are you ready, mademoiselle? Yes. Okay, <laughs> question one. What is your favorite film? Oh, uh, uh, Rocky IV or Dirty Dancing. <laughs> what? Don't, why are you laughing? I, there's no it's so, wrong... It's so specific. It's so specific. Especially Rocky, Rocky IV. Rocky yeah, yeah. Again, there's no wrong answer here. Yeah. We'll get into details another yeah. time. Number two, what is your favorite song or artist? Oh, favorite artist right now would probably be yeah, Imagine Dragons, but the cheesy song, Densa Kuduro. L love this one. <laughs> favorite sports team? Uh, Montreal Canadian. My grandpa will would kill me otherwise. Have so. you said anything yeah. else? Yeah, That's if amazing. I say anything else, I'm dead. <laughs> you hear that? You hear that here, El Presidente. Number four, favorite athlete, dead or alive? Mm, gotta go with Michael Jordan. What is your favorite food? Uh, jerk chicken. What is your favorite drink, alcoholic and non-alcoholic? Uh, coffee, obviously, for non-alcoholic. For uh, my team's uh, been driving me, uh, they make fun of me a lot because I, I'm always at the coffee machine. Um, alcoholic, probably strawberry daiquiri. Oh, wow, yeah. very nice. Very this summery. <laughs> very summery, perfect for today, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, this is the first half, and we're doing 12 questions with Joanie from the Montreal Alliance. Number seven, what would be the first thing you would buy if you won the lottery? Hmm. Probably a basketball team. <laughs> that is a brilliant answer. Yeah. Uh, dream trip. Mm, I've never been to Italy, so so far it's kind of high on my bucket list. How do you deal with stress? Uh, I eat a lot of food and eat candies. <laughs> if that's what you need. Yeah. If that's yeah. what you do, that's what you do. Number 10, pajamas or no pajamas for the listeners out there? Pajamas. Number 11, what is your favorite fashion brand at the moment? Uh, Nike. Number 12, name one thing you cannot live without. Ooh. Right now, my phone. I would like to have another answer, but yeah, my phone. <laughs> there is no <laughs> yeah, wrong yeah. answer on 12 questions. Yeah. And uh, our, our annex, our, we're talking legal terms because I yeah. got a lawyer in front of me. 12.1, <laughs> so I'm going to ask you for one word to describe football. So football is? Um, exciting. Love it. That's amazing. I was like, oh, no, she's going to throw it. It's not like basketball, but it's not one word. <laughs> yeah, that no, no. was 12 questions on the first half on TSN 690 with Joanie Charbonneau from the Montreal Alliance. El Presidente, honestly, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and we look forward to seeing all the different things that you guys will be doing in the community, and hopefully we can get you out at goal yes. again uh, one of these uh, one of these times so you can connect with you know that organization yeah. and crew as well that would be great thank you for having me such a good time and it was really fun and it flew honestly, by right it flew by so fast uh, i can come back anytime amazing <laughs> yes and we will have you back definitely awesome. thank you so we're going to take a little break we'll come back we're going to we're going to talk a little ballon d'or and what's coming up next week on the first half tsn 690